Locked, you know. You shouldn't carry so much. You made me break the eggs, that's what. Hello? Hello. What's the matter? Cleaners have ruined my best skirt. Oh, ruined it? Yes, they pressed the pleats the wrong way round. How can you tell which way a pleat should go? <laughs> Alan! Yeah? Proper lunch or proper dinner? Um, proper dinner. Uh, oh. <laughs> Are we doing anything this afternoon? Yes, I am. Tinkering. Jenny is making strange noises. Never makes anything else. In the bank. We seem to be worth 133 pounds and ninepence. Should be 143. I drew out 10. What for? Surprise. Well, what kind of a... Give it 
to that, will you? Very nice. Nice? It's like a jet. I've just spent 25 quid having her tuned up. How are you, old boy? Fine, thanks. And the beautiful Mrs. McKim? She's in, I hope. Wendy's in the kitchen. How about this old crock? Do you think she'll make it to Brighton? She always has. Well, if she doesn't, you'll have to take a train. I'm giving you a party tomorrow night. Huh? Just you, Wendy, Rosalind, and myself. Who's Rosalind? Woman I met at the races. I use the term woman in its broadest sense. I bet you do. From the east to western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. She's equally keen on you, of course. Keen? She's positively itching. Lunch in ten minutes. No, Ambrose. Hello, you gorgeous creature. <laughs> Come on, let's live a little. <laughs> Kettle's boiling. Ah, so am I. You look wonderful today. I'll come in and help you. Why don't you flog that wreck and buy a spiker? Silly ass. Oh, I see. That smells delicious. It wasn't very much. Well, you know me. Just a crust of bread. Any sherry? Help yourself. How's the advertising business? Dark, tedious. But lucrative. You have one, Wendy? Thanks. Who's the lucky girl this year? One, Rosalind Peters. She's a model. Oh, what does she model? Well, she's... Oh, don't tell me. I can guess. She says they're wearing the same thing in sweaters this year. <laughs> she seems very interested in vintage cars. Mm, wait until she's bounced all the way to Brighton and then... Bounced? My spiker doesn't bounce. It flows. You don't seem very excited about the rally, if I may say so. Not exactly beside myself. If I didn't know you better, I'd say your enthusiasm was on the wane. Oh, Ambrose, the whole thing's so silly. Oh, steady on, old girl. The London Brighton silly. Oh, well, it is. It's childish and a bore. Does Alan know you feel like that about it? No, of course not. I couldn't possibly tell him. Couldn't possibly tell me what? Uh, nothing. Well, tell me. No, it's nothing. Ambrose is staying to lunch. Brown or white? What couldn't you possibly tell me? The fact is, old boy, there's a spot of treachery in our midst. Wendy says... Ambrose. Wendy says the London Brighton is a bore. Ambrose, I think you're foul. Does that mean you don't want to go? No, of course I'll go. You don't have to go, you know, if you don't want to. I don't? Well, frankly, children, this is beyond me. Is there something you'd rather do instead? Well, well is there? Now, just remember, will you? I didn't bring this up and I didn't want to talk about it, but... As it happens, Tanya's having a party tomorrow. I'm having a party, too. You, Alan, Rosalind... The one weekend in the year that you know is important to me, and you'd rather go to a... Well, of course I'd rather go to a party. Does that make me abnormal or something? I simply don't see what's so wonderful about getting into a 50-year-old car and taking two days to drive to Brighton and back. Look, Ambrose, if you don't... Quiet. I was about to plead a subsequent engagement. Well, good luck, sport. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Of course I'll come. Perhaps it'll be better this year. No. No what? I'll make the run alone. Oh, please. If you're going to be moody and long-suffering about it... I, I'm moody and long-suffering. Don't you think you're being a little unfair? No, I don't. I think you're unfair. If Ambrose hadn't come Ambrose, in... Ambrose, Ambrose, let's leave him out of it, shall we? And that's the really unpleasant aspect about this situation, the fact that you talk to him. Well, why shouldn't I talk to him? He's our oldest friend, isn't he? He even introduced us. I'd like to be able to feel that when you had a problem, you could discuss it with me. Don't understand your eagerness to confide in Ambrose Claverhouse. That's a beastly thing to say. All right, then. So I'm unfair, moody, long-suffering and beastly. You know very well you were going to ask me to give up the run and take you to the party instead. You'd have asked me tonight. I'm not going with you. This year, next year, or any year. I'll never get into that silly car again. The lunch is ready. I don't want any lunch. Then don't eat any lunch. I can get it round to the pub. Then go round to the blasted pub. Why shouldn't I talk to him? The oldest... Wendy. Wendy.
Wendy, come and eat your lunch. Oh, go away. Cleaning my teeth. Some glass under the bathtub. I knocked a bit out of the window. Why sweep it under the tub? I'll only have to get it out again. Well, don't worry about it. I'll clean it up in the morning. What on earth are you looking for? Looking for a bandage. Why, hurt yourself? Oh, you'll survive. It's bleeding. If you have no objection, I'd like to have a bandage. I don't know where they are. They're all in a box somewhere. Do you think you'll be able to drive? It doesn't matter. I'm not going. What else do you mean, not going? Oh, Alan, do stop the headache. There are no bandages in there. It must be downstairs somewhere. If you think you can punish me by not going, you've got another thing coming. I don't care one little bit whether you go or not. And if you're not going, why did you spend the whole afternoon working on the car? Oh, me. What is taking place here is by now an old story, but surprising as it may seem, it was quite illegal until 1896. Until then, no self-propelled vehicle could take the road unless it was preceded by a man on foot and carrying a red flag. There were very few cars on the roads, and very few roads for that matter, merely stretches of dust. There were no garages or service stations, and the pioneer motorist bought his petrol from the chemist. But in that year was passed the Light Locomotives and Highways Act. To celebrate the event, the first car so emancipated started from the Metropole Hotel London and drove to the Metropole Hotel Brighton. Since 1928, the Veteran Car Club has held an annual commemoration run, but it is not and has never been a race. Here's a very handsome machine. A Darak, isn't it? Yes, that's right. 1904, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yes, I thought so. Well, I, I, wonder, I wonder whether you'd care to tell listeners how it was that you came to acquire this uh, vehicle, oh. Mr... Uh, uh, McKim. McKim, yes. Well, um, my grandfather bought a new, and about uh, 1928, my, uh, my, my father found on a rubbish dump, bought it for a pound, and rebuilt her. Um, he's made all the runs. I made all... He made all the runs before the war, and I've made them all since. Well, that's astonishing. Thank you both very much, and jolly good luck to you. Thank you. Whew. I wonder where Ambrose is. You see, Mr. Claverhouse? He's gone to telephone. His guest failed to appear. He's due to start in five minutes. I suppose after all that build-up, he isn't even going to produce her? Oh, oh, oh. Look! Do you think that's it the... It must be. Couldn't be anyone else. 
I beg your pardon. Are you Mr. Peters? Yes, you must be Mr. and Mrs. McKinnon, um... Alan and Wendy. Oh, Ambrose is friends. Isn't he here? I think he went to telephone. Oh. He'll be back. I I'll take your cases over to his car. <laughs> Thank you. Susie. Come on, Susie. Come on. There. This is Susie. She can say, how do you do? Say, how do you do, Susie? Say, how do you do, Susie? Oh. She can do the cutest things when she wants to. It must be too early in the morning. I didn't realize there's going to be so many people. Ambrose said it was a very exclusive club. Susie. I usually leave her with the housekeeper where I live. But she's been ill, so I had to bring her. You don't think that Ambrose will mind, do you? Mind? Of course not. He'll be delighted. Oh. Here we are. Is that it? This is it. Oh, no. Is this Ambrose's? But has it got brakes and everything? <laughs> I know he said it was an old car, but the way he talked about it, I thought it was something wonderful. <laughs> You'll get used to it. They all talk like that. Rosalind! Hi! Rosalind! Hi! Hi. Morning, Wendy. Morning, Morning our sport. Hello. So reason prevailed, eh? <laughs> Thank heavens you got here. I've been calling your number all night. Oh, I'm sorry, but I went to that party on Friday and it sort of got out of hand. Everybody decided to fly to Jersey. Eh? Oh, oh well, never mind. <coughs> What's that? I was going to leave her with the housekeeper, but she's been sick. The dog's been sick? No, of course not the housekeeper. But, Rosalind, we can't take that mutt all the way to Brighton. She's not a mutt. She's a sweet dog and has absolutely perfect manners. But can't you understand? We can't take a great big fat lump of a... It... Alan, bear me out. It just won't do, will it? Well, I don't see why not, old man. Oh, fine, fine. That's very funny. Mr. Cleverhouse! Mr. Cleverhouse! You're next. Oh, all right, but well, we'd better get aboard. Rosalind, fuck up. Hurry up! <laughs> Right, you get started. You're a great help, you are. Susie's itching anyway. Nah. See you in Brighton. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Nobody home. Happy, darling? I know I was a silly ass yesterday, but well, it's just that it wouldn't be the same without you. I love you. You know that? And I love you, too. And I'm glad I came. Really. <laughs> these tram lines. You know, I think she's feeling better now. I think she's even beginning to like it. Aren't you, Susie? But where did you get her? I found her during the war. I think she was blitzed because she was awfully neurotic. Do you know, for a long time she wouldn't eat anything except ravioli. Isn't that strange? <laughs> Too cold, are you, darling? No, I'm fine. I don't think it'll rain anyway. <laughs> I must say, considering how little time I've had to work on her, the old girl's really behaving herself. You should never say a thing like that. Nothing important. Won't take a minute. Want some coffee? No, thanks. Not now. Having trouble? Well, we shall be all right. Thank you. All right for petrol. Yes, quite. Better try a new flint. <laughs> Martin Caro, enough for you. Typical. 
I thought that was very funny. <laughs> Do you think it was funny? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, darling. And it's not even 10.30. What do you mean? Well, you can't lose your temper now. If you lose your temper now, what on earth are you going to be like by evening? <laughs> Wendy! Oh, my God. Oh, I saw God for a white skirt. Do something. Why don't you do something? Get a oh, towel, darling. Quick, get There's in. another one. Stop beside it. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh, I'll have to change absolutely everything. Come on, come on, come Here. on, darling. Oh, you are clumsy. It's all your fault. It wasn't my fault. It was an accident, Wendy. Why couldn't you be more careful? Listen, I... It's ruined the dress. Wendy, I'm oh. terribly sorry, but I didn't know you were pouring the coffee. Otherwise, I wouldn't have drank the collar. Darling. <laughs> now, look here, my friend. We don't want any. Very nice. Thank you very much. Hold on there. What's the matter, chum? Don't you want to see yourself on the films? Take your missus to the locals. She'll love it. Wendy, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. Are you soaking? Is there anything I can do? Yes. Put these in the car. Here, and this too. Hello, again. Hello, there. Uh. I'm sorry, darling. It was my fault, the whole thing. Never mind. It's not as bad as all that. Come on, let's go. You know, I wouldn't blame you if you said you wanted to turn back. Well, I don't. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not just saying that? Look, I don't want you to go on with this just because you think I'd be hurt. I'm perfectly willing to go home. I mean it. We'd get back in time for Tanya's party. Oh, come off it, Alan. But I mean it. You don't mean it at all. You know as well as I do we shall be in Brighton tonight, dead or alive. But you want to go on. I've said I want to go on. I know, but if you did want to go home, I'll... I, all right. I... All right, what? Let's go home. Huh? I want to go home. Do you mean it? Of course I mean it. Darling, you are serious, aren't you? You're not oh, just... Oh, for heaven's sake, Alan. You know perfectly well we're going to Brighton. Are we going to sit here all day? You realise what good time we've made? I told you, you shouldn't say... I know, I shouldn't say things like that, but the fact is we have. I've just had an idea. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to know what it is? You should do, because you're going to be delighted. All right. Delight me. Look, old Harry's pub's only half a mile ahead. We're going to stop, and I'm going to buy you a jolly good lunch. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to buy you a jolly good dinner. I'm not counting on that, either. It'll take at least half an hour to put this right. You know, I really did want to buy you a decent lunch, but... What are you looking for? What's this? Food! Yes. But how? When? when, when? Last night. Last night? While you were asleep. I knew we wouldn't get any lunch. Never have done yet we went to Brighton. Chicken. Ham. Salad. Olives! Oh, you're wonderful. It's a wonderful idea. It makes the day. Mm. 
Some difficulty, old man. Where have you been? We didn't pass you. We've just been enjoying a delicious and most leisurely lunch. You've changed. Oh, and you've had a picnic. Oh. Why couldn't we have had a picnic? I love picnics. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you think that old Crocs packed it in for good? Well, don't worry about it. Are you sure I can't give you a hand, old boy? Don't you think Wendy ought to come with us? I should hate it to miss the parade. <laughs> Yes. If you take my advice, old boy, the next time that engine dies, you'll take it out and bury it. Ha-ha! What was that? Hurry, let's go. Do you think something awful's happened? Could be. Oh, oh Susie! some difficulty, old man? Ah. Maybe we should take Roslyn with us. You know, I should hate her to miss the parade. Oh. <laughs> if you take my advice, the next time that engine dies... <laughs> oh. ah. <laughs> Did you see his expression? Oh. <laughs> It wasn't uh, that funny. It wasn't funny at all, really. Oh. You should have stopped and helped him. What, I stop and help Ambrose? After all his insults to Genevieve? I wouldn't lend him a hand oh, if he was the that's last. that's unfair. I don't know what it is about these silly old cars, but the moment people get into them, they start behaving like idiots. You know perfectly well if you were in trouble, he'd stop and help you. Never. He would. Never. Anyhow, I'd never ask him to. <laughs> Alan! Steering's gone. Now sit tight, Wendy. We'll be all right. Alan! Hold on, darling. We'll be all right. Alan! Sorry, darling. Is it really serious? I don't know. I can try. It'll take hours. I need a ring spanner. It's Ambrose. He's got one, just the sort I need. Ambrose! Ambrose! Ambrose, wait a minute! Ambrose! <laughs> drink to celebrate. Love one. 
If you'd like, we've got time enough to pop across to the hotel and check up that uh, our rooms are okay. Uh, not now. I'd like to see uh, what happens. In certain circumstances, you know, I can forget all about the parade. Steady, Junior. Steady. Ambrose, huh? do you think the McKims will get here? Alan? It's a kind of family sacrament with him. He'll be here on time if he has to push that Dalek on his hands and knees. There's the Olivers. Hello, boy. May I introduce my... Uh, this is Miss Peters. Joan, Sally, John Oliver. Seven. Oh, we won't even be there for the dinner. First time. First time ever in 25 years. so much in all my life. Darling, wait in the car a minute, will you? Why? What's the matter? I'll be right back. But isn't this the right place? Yes, but well, well just wait a minute. Take your bags. Just hold on a minute, will you? Evening, miss. Evening. Had a nice day's driving, miss. Thank you for asking. No. Have no. you? No. Darling, there's, there's something I have to tell you. Well? Well, we haven't got a room. That's absurd. Of course we've got a room. No. You sent them a wire a fortnight ago. Yes, but last night when you said you weren't coming, I... I... You sent them another wire and cancelled the room. Yes. And then you didn't tell me because you thought I might be put off by the idea of sleeping on the beach. Darling, please don't be angry. Oh. They've given the address of another place and they say it's wonderful. Oh, wonderful. I should tell you that we don't usually let this room until all the others are taken. You see, I'm afraid it is a little uncomfortable. It's rather noisy. Noisy? The lady who had it last, one of our permanent residents, was totally deaf. So in her case, it didn't really matter. Unfortunately, only last week we lost her. You see, it's, it's really very... Well, I'm very... sure it will do very well. Well, it's very close Oh, that's to... all right. Um, which floor, please? It's number 57 on the 5th. Mr. and Mrs. McKim. Yes, that's right. Is there a lift? Oh, no. I'm afraid we have no lift. Well, is there someone who can give me a hand with these? I'm so sorry. The whole pot is just having his supper. But you can leave them there if you like. I think I can manage. Uh, is the bath near our room, please? No, both the bathrooms are on the second floor landing. The second? Yes, you'll see them on your way up. And when you want to take a bath, would you be so kind as to sign the little book you'll find just inside the bathroom door? Sign right now. Oh, I'm so sorry, but hot water is provided only in the afternoons between half past two and six. There's no hot water? Yes, hot water is provided in the afternoons between half past two and six. Darling, I think we'd better go up. But this is preposterous. Do I have to sign the book in order to have a cold bath? Well, the rule simply says that hot water is provided. You mean I can't even have a cold bath? Wendy, please. I'm very sorry, but I did not make the rule. Well, then who did? Oh, never mind. I don't want to know. No one's ever complained before. Are they Americans?
about his whip crankshaft. I don't care what anybody says. I wouldn't have a self-starter for bed. Well, of course, I like everything else you've got to look after. What can you expect from a teased-out old Derek? Oh, oh. He won't dare show his face around the club for months. I mean to say, not even arriving in time for the dinner. <laughs> they made it. Here they are. <laughs> I was so afraid you weren't going to get here. We very nearly didn't. Well, have you enjoyed your first trip? Well, old sport, we had a spot of bother. Spot? Don't you realize that your Derek was the only... Well, look, happened to anyone. Ah, didn't happen to my spiker. Oh, no. Haven't we had enough about vintage cars for one day? No, oh, I couldn't well, agree I with you more. simply must know what now, the... Are what? we going to have a party or a club meeting? Now, look, Rosalind and I have put up with your nonsense all the way down, and tomorrow we have to put up with it all the way back. Now, just for a few hours, let's have some peace. Well, I only wanted to know what oh, went wrong. Oh, don't be such a bore. You're quite right. This is only my first time. How you do it year in and year out, I can't imagine. <laughs> Dance? Are you sure you don't want to dance more? No, not if you don't mind. I'm afraid I'm not very good at it. No, you're not. Still, you're better than Ambrose. Oh. He knew Wendy before you did, didn't he? Said he'd introduced you. Hmm? Yes, that's right. Well, I think it's sweet the way you don't worry about it. What do you mean? And why should I worry about it? <laughs> well, you know Ambrose better than I do. That band's not awfully good, is it? Huh? No, no, you may not believe this, but I can play the trumpet much better than that. Oh, really? When I was 16, I was in an all-girls orchestra. Oh, but I had to give it up. Oh, why? No future in it. Anyway, it ruins your lips. <laughs> you wouldn't think to look at me that I'd ever played a trumpet, would you? If you hadn't told me, it would never have occurred to me. <laughs> what do you think of Rosalind, eh? I think she's terrific, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you something, Wendy. In complete confidence, of course. But one of my greatest ambitions all these years has been to... Now, let's see, how shall I put it? Has been to combine the pleasure of the London Brighton with a really beautiful emotional experience. You mean you never have? It's incredible, isn't it? But every single... <laughs> now, don't laugh, please, please. Every single year, something's gone wrong. In 48, the wretched girl had to come all the way to Brighton to discover that she'd got measles. <laughs> German measles. And in 49, the wretched girl locked you out of her room all night. Poor Ambrose. What happened to the others? Well, in 1950, she suddenly... Well, never mind the details. <laughs> the fact is that this time, at long last... The old London to Brighton takes on a special significance. Congratulations, Ambrose. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. By the way, did you ever tell Alan about that weekend? No. But why not? He never asked me. Well, you don't suppose for a moment he thinks that... But I was... An emotional experience? <laughs> no, I'm sure he doesn't. Well, I don't know. He's always giving me some peculiar looks. Oh, no, you mustn't think that. Alan may have his little shortcomings, but he's certainly not the jealous type. Thank you, dear. Rosalind, don't you think you'd better... I'd like to play the trumpet. Would anybody like to hear me play the trumpet? Hey, you must have had even more than I thought. Wendy, you'd like to hear me play the trumpet. Well, do you, do you think you should? What's the name of your car? Uh, Cle Clementine? Genevieve. Genevieve. I'll show them how to play the trumpet. Hey, Rosalind! She must be blotter.
That's what it was. Don't you agree, Wendy? Wonderful. Alan? Absolutely. Why on earth didn't you tell me that... Rosalind. Rosalind! She's out. Jordan Ambrose. What about me and Ambrose? I think it's time I knew exactly what's going on. I don't know what you mean. You know perfectly well what I mean. It brings a different girl down here each year. Let's not pretend we don't know why. Well? I've never asked you this. I never even mentioned it. But now I want to know the answer. What answer? What's the question? What happened on the 49 run? <laughs> I'm serious. I want to know. What, what happened on the 49 run? Yes. Mm, well, we left Hyde Park at about um, 8.30. And then we stopped somewhere in Surrey for a cup of coffee. Oh, Alan, do you mean... What happened after the annual dinner? That's precisely what I mean. Oh, darling, are you sure? Are you sure you really want to know what happened? Why have you never asked me before? Why didn't you ask me before we were married? Look, what happened? Oh, it's silly to bring it up after we've been married for three years. Let's forget about it. Make love to me. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, darling, you wouldn't want to be married to a woman of no experience whatever, would you? What would you do if I told you? You see? You don't even know. Will you make up your mind what you'd do, and then I'll tell you. Make love to me. Oh, all right, if you don't take the matter seriously. Alan, what are you doing? I have some work to do on the car. At this hour? I can't hit wait. Alan! What do you mean? 
do if I told you? You see, you don't even know. Yeah. I had a hunch I'd find you here. Well, what do you want? Where's Rosalind? She's asleep. <laughs> but what's so blasted funny about it? You are. <laughs> Never mind, Ambrose, you still have Susie. When he turned in? Yes. Why? I just wondered. She seems a bit fed up with you, old boy. If I may say so. Well, don't worry about it. Oh, but I do. I mean, I was the one who brought you two together. I just hate to see anything going wrong. With your marriage, I mean. Just what do you mean by that? Well, sometimes, old boy, I have the feeling that you don't really appreciate Wendy. Oh, you do? Yes, I'm sure of it. Well, I'm sure of something else. We're getting awfully tired of you perpetually sticking your face into our affairs. You're always hanging around, soaking up all the drink in the house, bothering Wendy. Steady on. Wendy always seems glad to see me. Now, look here. If you're so keen on Wendy and you're always pointing out you knew her before I did, why didn't you marry her when you had the chance? You know, I've often wondered about that myself. Frankly, I think the answer is that Wendy's improved a lot during the past three years. I can't think why, but there it is. You better clear out of here. Right now. We were just going. You know, I really came to ask if you'd like us to take Wendy back tomorrow. After all, this old croc's scarcely likely to make it. Don't be an ass. Do you really think that spiker ah, of yours? It wasn't the spiker that got here after dinner. This is the better machine, and you really well know Nonsense. it. Nonsense. Look, I'm bored with all this. Genevieve would leave you standing. I don't suppose you care to back that statement. I certainly would, any time. First one to London? We'd get kicked out of the club. Ah, who'd know? All right. How much? Anything you like. Twenty-five? Uh-huh. Fifty? Right. That's not too steep for you. Make it a hundred. Oh, now, wait a moment. What's the matter, losing interest? By no means, but a hundred. Oh, it's just that I never knew you were a gambler. It's no gamble. This is the better car. And even if it weren't, you're such a rotten driver. What? You dare say that to me? Rotten driver? Right. Twelve o'clock at the pub. We'll be there. Come on, Susie. Friend of yours, Gov? No. What on earth are you doing? I'm sorry, darling. I, I had to strip her right down. Darling, you can't do without sleep. Oh, I'm all right, really. Listen, Wendy. Ambrose was here last night. What did he want? He said... Oh, it doesn't matter. The important thing is we made a bet. We're racing back to London. Oh, don't be silly. Oh, it is cold in here. Wendy, I bet him a hundred pounds. You did... I know I shouldn't have done it, but... Oh! Wait a minute, Wendy! Listen, Wendy! <laughs> Darling, you have to listen to me. Look, I admit it was foolish. I admit it was wrong to do it, but you have to come with me. I'll have nothing to do with it. You have to come. I'm serious. If you didn't come, it'd be humiliating. Alan, how could you? Oh, I don't know. I, I was angry. I lost my temper. He was hinting things. Oh, he said you were always glad to see him. He said he wondered why I hadn't asked you to marry him. Marry him? Ambrose? Are you out of your mind? Darling, I'm sorry. I know I talked a lot of nonsense last night. But you were so pompous and stuffy. Oh, Alan, you must have known I was talking nonsense. You can tell him you didn't mean it. Oh, no, I can't. Now, bet's a bet. 
We can beat him, darling. I promise you we can beat him. All right, I'll come. But if you've thrown away a hundred pounds, almost all we've got in the bank, just for the sake of a ridiculous bet. Oh, Alan, how can you have been such an idiot? Alan, darling, what is it? Nothing, nothing. I'm just... Rather tired. better now. Oh, oh. Won't it be awfully boring racing about in these old cars? Boring? How fast do they go? Well, if he tears that car of his to shreds, he might get 27 out of her, but I'll bet you will absolutely leave him. Will you put me on a train? Now, look, Rosalind, if I don't carry a passenger, how can I expect McKim to? All right. Oh, what a weekend. <laughs> oh. I tell you what, if we win that hundred pounds, We'll pop over to Latuke next weekend, eh? Ambrose, <laughs> that Latuke routine went out with a high button boot. Ha ha! Here they are. Morning, sport. You thought you might have changed your mind, Wendy? <sighs> well, I seem to have left the party rather abruptly last night. Feeling better? Well, pop down then. Have a drink. We'll need one or two for the road. No, thanks. I'd rather get started. Ah, well, surely you'll have just one. No, let's go. Very well, then. On your way. What do you mean? Go ahead. We'll have a few more drinks, and we'll catch you up. Oh, I think this is all getting very silly, don't yes, you? Yes, I do! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, turn another pint, please. But if we're, we, if we're going to race, shouldn't we get started? My dear old girl, when that car gets started, you'll be intoxicated by the exuberance of your own velocity. <laughs> Did you get that? I said you'll be intoxicated by... I the... said I'm not drinking anything at all today. Nothing at all. I'll show him the pompous ass. Any sign of them yet? Come off it, darling. You want us to win, don't you? Yes, of course I do. But I still think it's ridiculous. No, I can't see them. Good. Imagine him waving us off like that. Conceited clown. Why don't you start it? <laughs> oh. Oh. I say, would you mind giving me a push, please? We're All in a right, race for that Derek. about 50 miles per hour. Yes, but I can explain, officer. You see, trying to kill yourselves? No, not really, but we're in a race. Race? What are you racing in there? Another fellow, a 1904 Spiker. Since when has the veteran car club gone in for racing? Well, it hasn't really, but you see... Well, well we... you're in a restricted area. Oh, you're not going to give us a ticket, are you? Sorry, madam. Oh, but, officer, we're already in so much trouble. Who would know if you just let us go? We'd be so grateful. 
Billy. Well, then let's catch you again. Darling, you were wonderful. They might have kept us there for ten minutes. You know, I'm just... Ambrose can't be very far behind. <laughs> get new sheep out of here! You can't block up the whole road like this! Go on, woman, get him out of here! Go on, get out of it! Look, there's a shortcut up there. We get round him. Stop, are you mad? Now, see here, my friend. I don't think there's anyone here. Oh, don't worry about that gate. Run down to the stream. Don't be long, Wendy. Oh, oh, oh. Wendy, what are you doing? Hurry up. Oh, shut up. I am. Oh! Look, there they are. Uh. Ah! <laughs> oh. Well, what's the matter? What do you want? It's my wife. She's going to... I've got to get the nurse, the district nurse. Oh, well, all right. We'll jump on. Hurry. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. It's the next one, the turning on the left. What do you mean he says off the main road? Oh, only half a mile. There, that one. But we can't win our oh, race. Don't be so ridiculous. Don't be such a stinker. This just isn't fair. How can I be expected to stand the job? He's making awfully good time. Straight, straight, you're fine. Oh, please, can't you go a little faster? Shut up, you silly ass. You go, go and drive go this on. thing. Oh, oh. Anything wrong? There's nothing serious. A broken fan belt. But I have to get to a garage. Could you possibly give me a tow? I'd be delighted. Got a rope? Yes, thanks very much. On your way back from a big rally? Yes. My name's Callaghan. Oh. J.C. Callaghan. McKim. Alan McKim. Madam. <laughs> well, what's the point of rushing back now? This won't take long to fix. Well, now that we've lost. Who says we've lost? You don't admit that we've lost. Why should I? But being told, do you call that fair? 
What did you expect me to do? Tear it to pieces by driving the loose? I didn't expect you to cheat. It's not cheating. You're just mad because you twisted your well, ankle. Well, if this isn't cheating, then what is? Ah, you've been the same all day. You, you didn't want to come to Brighton in the first place. That's got now. nothing whatever to do with it. If it's you got, got everything to do with it. It's got everything to do with it. Rules? Yes, Who makes the rules, anyway? Oh! Haven't you got any brakes? You stopped so suddenly. Look I was... Look what you've done to this car. Well, it's not that serious, you know. My, my insurance will cover insurance? that. Insurance? What has that to do with it? This car belongs to my wife. And when she sees what... Hey, how do we get ahead of you? Just what does this mean? Have you conceded the race? Take your hands off that car. Of course I haven't conceded the race. I had to have a tow. Well, I... if we're going to get a tow to London, we can both be there in half the what time. What am I going to tell my wife? What? How do I know what you're going to tell your wife? Ask my wife. But there wasn't a single man. Who cares I about your bloody car? Why did you get out of What do you want? A public Can't apology in the best of the night? Don't know my wife. Argument? She only bought well, the have car last night. Well, have you conceded on? Oh, shut up. You're worse than he is. Go away. Go away. You go away. Yes, go away. Go on. Get out of here. Buzz off. Oh, really, Ellen? Can I help you, sir? It's my fan belts, broken link. Right. Now, listen. If you want to cheat and be pulled, I'm not prepared oh, to... Oh, look, what's the difference between being pushed or pulled? We were pushed nearly half a mile. You keep out of this. Now, stop it, both of you. You're being ridiculous. Either you call the whole thing off or else stop behaving like lunatics. All right. If you're going to make this a race in which anything goes, that suits me. I can fix it, sir. Right. Whenever you're ready, Duchess. Isn't this becoming just a little bit frantic? Look what he's done to me. Oh, he's no worse than Alan. The oh. same every year. Come on, we're wasting time. Bye. Oh. Bye. Bye. Wendy. Thank you, sir. Don't worry, we'll catch them up. Oh, what's wrong now? Try it again. They'll drive me absolutely crazy. Well, you don't seem to have enjoyed the picnic much. Yesterday, you said you'd rather have Never a picnic. Never yesterday. I'm sorry, Ambrose, but I'm hot and I'm filthy. Anyway, it was a sweet idea and a nice surprise. More wine? I shouldn't drink any more. Oh, it makes me so sleepy. Why don't you stretch out and relax for a while? Can I? Oh, it'd be heaven. But what about the race? Don't give it a thought. We've all the time in the world. But if you lose that race... We won't lose. We can't. McKim will be sitting in that garage for hours. How do you know he hasn't already passed it? Because he'll be looking for this. You mean that car won't even run? Not ten feet. So you see, we haven't a thing in the world to worry about. Well, I must say that's a dirty trick to play on anybody. Rosalind, you saw him being told. Anyway, I'd never have taken his money. I don't care. I think it's just a rotten thing oh, to do. Be reasonable. I thought you'd enjoy a little break. I've had as much of this as I can stand. I want to go home. Oh, there's no need to hurt Susie either. Come on, Susie. 42 minutes. I think this one will hold, sir. I think so. What kind of a man can do a thing like that? That's what I want to know. What kind of a man? Oh, darling, don't worry, sir. You'll make yourself ill. Best I can do, sir, should get you to London. Thank you, sir. Hope you catch him, sir. We'll never catch him up now, darling. Never say die. What kind of a man? What kind of a man, though? I mean, I had to have a tow or burn up my engine, but to make a better, then deliberately to ruin the other man's chances. 
If you're about to become a father, I'm not interested. I'm sorry to trouble you, sir, but I wanted to ask if you knew anything about the accident. Accident? Yes, some friends of mine who were on the rally. A young couple named McKim. We've just heard that they... McKim? What, do you mean to say that... Well, was it a serious accident? Well, the chap that just stopped here said... What, you mean that... Oh, my... <laughs> Telephone. What are you grinning about? <laughs> I suppose I should be grateful for a break in the gloom. Ambrose and Rosalind probably be in London by now laughing at us. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, if you don't stop laughing, I'll go. <laughs> Will you stop that silly row? It's a surprise. And here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> I still say you shouldn't have done it. I say you had it coming to him. To let your best friend think you've been killed? My best friend? Oh, I... shut up. You make me sick. What's the matter, officer? You again. What's going on? This car's been reported stolen. Can't be them, Dave. The report said it was stolen only half an hour ago. Oh, it's that idiot we're racing, the one I told you about. He put in a false report? Looks like it, officer. You know, I'm afraid he's a little insane. He wouldn't stop at anything to win this race. Wouldn't he? Where is he now? <laughs> That's him there. All right, you go on. We'll deal with him. <laughs> Don't be too hard on him, will you? He can't really help it, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's up, officer? Your name's up? Claverhouse. Ambrose Claverhouse. Did you report a stolen car? What? Stolen car? No. Why, this is my car, officer. May I see your license, sir? Yes, of course. Well... Well, wait a minute, I've... Uh... You know... <coughs> Ambrose! Well, stop I... it! You'll have to stop somewhere for a minute. What? Oh, no, not now. Surely you can. No, I can't. If you don't mind. Oh. But, officer, I had new wicks put in all the lamps only last week. That tire's meant to be loose. It's been like that for the last 49 years. It'd be more regular to have him sign a proper statement at the station. Oh, but fair's fair, yeah. officer. You kept us here for four minutes already. If you don't let go now, we won't even stand a chance. All right, but I warn you. Ah, thank you, One officer. One more trick like that and you'll be in real trouble. I bet I killed you. That's the most disgusting trick I've ever known a man to play. Which trick? Stealing the top of my float chamber or telling the police I'd stolen my own car? You started all that. You can't even cheat on a decent basis. You let us think you'd been killed. <laughs> oh, well, the report of my death was, uh, what was it the man said, greatly exaggerated. Who cares about your death? I was thinking about Wendy. And if it weren't for Wendy, I'd give you a lesson you'd never forget. Have you ever seen anything like it? 
Is it really like this every year? Not quite like this. No, well, if you feel in an instructive mood, I warn you, I'm almost at breaking point. Go on, then break. I warn you. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? What, waiting for? <laughs> what goes on inside their heads? That's what I'd like to know. I don't know about your husband, but Ambrose seems to think of only two things, that silly old car and the other thing. What other thing? <laughs> oh, no, my husband only thinks about the car. Oh, dear. Come on, sir. Come on, break it up. Break it up. Well, don't look at me. He started all this. Well, I'm like thinking of her. First, you decide to stage a race on a public highway. What is Not in did. sound cars with decent brakes, but in two museum pieces which were out of date 40 years ago. Oh, officer, really? I mean, then a... you go tearing through a restricted area at 50 miles per hour. He can't do 50 miles then an hour. Then you put in false reports to the police. Well, officer, then you sure. decide you can't be satisfied unless you bash each other's brains out. Well, there was well, nothing it's... to it. Well, just... No, we wouldn't like you gentlemen to think we were being unreasonable. Oh, thank you very much. But if there's one more bit of trouble from either of you. We'll pull you in on so many different charges, you won't be out in time for next year's Brighton run. Let's go. These two will drive me bomb. All right, come on now. All right, now it's all it. over. Yeah. You shouldn't encourage them, you know. Oh. Well, well, well. This is the end. Making a public spectacle of yourselves. Oh, well. I wouldn't have believed you could have behaved like this. Either of you. Just hauling like brooligans. Hauling like brooligans? Well, brooling like hooligans. Oh, he was hauling like a brooligan, not me. Don't you call me a brooligan? It's not <laughs> funny. Oh, for goodness sake, let's go home. All right, let's call the whole thing off and have a party. Look, the pub will be open in ten minutes, what you say? All right, that's a good Come idea. Come on, let's go. Oh, she served lovely cream, Archie. Yes, let's have four doubles. Four large pink and white. Four shirt. large pink and white. Oh, what are you laughing about? Look! <laughs> oh! Here we are! Doubles all round! <laughs> cheers, my dears. <laughs> I was wondering what that chap you bashed into told his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how did you get behind us back at Pease Pottage? Eh? Oh! Well, we picked up an expectant father looking for the district nurse. In the time I wasted with him, I could have delivered the brat myself. <laughs> These are good. You know, Everything considered, we made jolly good time. Oh, I don't know. If we'd really wanted to, we could have been in London two hours ago. Why weren't you then? I didn't want to take your money, old sport. Ask Rosalind, didn't I say to you, if Rosalind? If didn't want to take the money, why did you make the bet? Well, heat in the moment, old boy. As soon as I realized you hadn't a chance. A chance? We were ahead of you. Now, look. But there's still nine miles to the bridge. You don't think you'd have stayed ahead of us, do you? I most certainly do. What difference does it make who's ahead of who? It makes every difference. It was his idea we call off the race. Do you really think you'd stand an earthly? I have a good mind to hold you to that bet. Hold me, as far as I'm concerned, the bet's still on. Oh, you're not serious. Right. But if that old crock of yours falls to pieces, you've asked for it. Come on, Rosalind. First on Westminster Bridge. You're on. Here we go again. Why can't you be reasonable? He gave you a chance to call it off. Look, there's just one thing. Whatever you think of that car, she'd fetch a hundred pounds tomorrow, is that right? Oh, easily, but I don't... All right, the bet's still on, but if I lose, I won't pay you a hundred. I'll give you Genevieve. Genevieve? Oh, look, Anna, that's... Well, that's fair enough, isn't it? Well, I know... First over the bridge. First over the bridge. Get in, Rosalind. But, Alan, surely you well, don't... There's no to... money involved. I'm betting the car. It's got nothing whatever to do with you, so if you don't like it, you can get out and take a bus. Look, don't you think this is getting a what? little out of What's it got to do with you? You heard what he said. Either get out of this car and take that silly mutt with you or stop your blasted nattering. That crock of yours falls to pieces. Silly ass. <laughs> do you really think you can beat him? Of course I can. First on Westminster Bridge. OK! <laughs> Come on, take it off the crossing. Come on. Hurry up. 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 Hurry up.
hurry up. Come on. 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 1904, so it was, Pangborn. And she said yes, but oh, it was the car. I'm sure of that, it was the car. Yeah, I hope I'm not holding you up. Not at all, sir. I knew there were chaps like you, you know, keeping up these old cars. We don't get about as much as we used to, you know. No. Look, perhaps you'd like me to come over and I'll give you a drive in the sometime. What, do you mean to say, but that's very kind. Would you really do that? I, I simply can't tell you. Wait a moment, I'm sure I've got a card. Your wife might like to come too. You can take the wheel yourself if you like. I say, sir, that... Tomorrow evening? Yeah, tomorrow? Oh, I'm very grateful, sir. Very grateful indeed.
But it'll leave us practically penniless. Who cares about that? Thank you. 